The True Blue Mine, located in West Wyalong, New South Wales, is a redundant gold mine which operated from the 1890s to around 1920. The main shaft is a 300 metre vertical shaft, approximately 1.2 metres by 4 metres, with an unknown number of lateral shafts at various depths. The shaft was originally separated into three chambers. Timber was used to shore up the sides of the shaft and to form the chambers. The soil profile from the surface to approximately 60 metres depth varies, below which was identified as competent rock. The water table sits at approximately 30 metres below the surface. In the ensuing years after the mine closed, deterioration of the timber shoring and water ingress resulted in the top portion of the shaft collapsing, which in turn led to voiding and surface settlement. The mine shaft is located within the car park of an operating motel, approximately 15 metres from the Newell Highway. The motel owner first noticed signs of subsidence in December 2007. Prior to Mainmark's involvement, initial attempts were made in 2014 to stabilise the shaft. The top six metres of the shaft was excavated and a steel collar and 300-tonne concrete cap was installed. Ongoing subsidence resulted in the development of a significant void underneath the concrete cap, approximately 8 metres wide by 10 metres deep by 2.5 metres high, 200 cubic metres in size, which was causing the motel to subside and sinkholes to form on the surface. Mainmark was commissioned in June 2015 by the Derelict Mines Program, administered by the New South Wales Department of Industry, to plug, cap and seal the mine shaft. It delivered an end-to-end -end fixed price solution. My role was uh, project manager for the main contractor uh, with overall uh, responsibility for delivering the project in accordance with the, the contract and the agreed scope of works. Also managing the communications between the, the client and the internal and external stakeholders. The main aim of the project was to remediate a collapsed mine shaft, degraded or deteriorated over years and experienced localised collapsing. So the Department of Derelict Mines with their geotech engineers have scoped out a remediation program which we then tended on and were successful in. The client was seeking a cost-effective fill material that would be both structurally adequate to support the proposed loads as well as lightweight to reduce the risk of further shaft subsidence due to imposed loads. The entire project was delivered for a fixed price of 1.1 million Australian dollars. Approximately 10% of the project budget was used for extensive research and development to develop the bespoke grout. This included trials at Mainmark's testing facility in Cardiff, New South Wales. Mainmark delivered significant cost savings for the derelict mines program. The neutrally buoyant plug eliminated the need to fill the shaft from the bottom up, which could have doubled the cost of the project. It also delivered a solution for a problem that was unsolvable using conventional fill methods. The existing concrete cap that had been installed a year prior by another contractor for a similar cost of approximately 1 million Australian dollars was unsuccessful and due to the high load, approximately 300 tonnes, caused further damage to the shaft. The scope of works was broken into six stages. Stage 1. Shaft Collar Stabilisation Prior to the commencement of the works on site, it was necessary to confirm that the conditions under the concrete cap, installed approximately one year earlier, had not changed and that the cap was still supported. A camera was used to determine that there was a significant void under the concrete cap, initially thought to be in the vicinity of 250 cubic metres. Mainmark proposed the use of our lightweight cementitious fill product Terrafill 1000 to fill the void and re-support the cap which would allow the main contract works to progress without delay. After liaising with the client and an accelerated mobilisation of just five days from approval, 540 cubic metres of Terrafill was pumped, filling the void and re-supporting the cap. Stage 2 – Shaft Preparation and Drilling Prior to commencement of the emergency works in Stage 1, gas monitoring was established to monitor the presence and concentration of gases expelled from the shaft. 
a sonic drill rig was used to install three 76 mm internal diameter steel casings to a depth of around 60 meters to provide access to form the temporary plug. Once the casings were established at depth, detailed CCTV surveys were undertaken in an attempt to identify the as-found conditions at the target zone. The sonic drill unit was selected as the most appropriate to drill through the matrix of timber and rubble expected to be encountered. Stage 3. Installing the sacrificial plug. The original methodology to form the temporary plug involved pumping a urea silicate resin, geofoam, into the target zone using a water inflatable packer and integrated static grout mixing assembly and appropriate resin pumping delivery system. It was intended to expand and agglomerate the matrix of rubble and timbers, forming a suitable plug to accommodate the cementitious shaft backfill material. The original methodology failed due to a number of factors, including encountered conditions at depth and casing size limitations. Keeping close communication with the client derelict mines, Mainmark then commenced on-site trials of alternate methodologies to form the sacrificial plug. These included grout bags. Several attempts were made to deploy a specially modified grout bag down the casing with a view to inflating to form the plug. A number of different bag materials, lycra, polypropylene, waterproof nylon, were trialled along with various fill materials, resin, cementitious materials and water. Specialist engineers. Following the grout bag option, Mainmark engaged specialist engineers from the US. The advice was to formulate a neutrally buoyant grout. Modified Terrafill. Terrafill mix was modified with specially acquired anti-wash additives. Material Scientist. Mainmark engaged the services of Peter Hodgson to develop a bespoke neutrally buoyant grout with several months spent off-site in considerable R&D a pressure vessel built to mimic conditions at depth, spring-loaded steel retractors developed, and numerous grout trials. I had to make a concrete which had a density just above the density of water. I had to make the concrete such that it wouldn't wash out when it was pumped through a water column. And thirdly, I had to make it in such a way that it would bridge large areas where there may not be anything to support it. So it was quite a, a technical exercise. Its viscosity was critical and we also had, of course, time constraints. The physical properties were about 10 MPa compressive strength, which was satisfactory if you had a depth of approximately a metre to support any amount of ordinary strength concrete above it. Right? We used very fine cement. We used fume silica, and the fume silica was there to stabilise the cement and stop it from washing out, right, and, and to give the correct rheology for flow properties. 90 self-expanding deflectors were deployed down the casings to provide a fail-safe temporary form for the specially designed grout. Temporary plug formed. Cementitious, neutrally buoyant and non-compressive grout was pumped over a number of shifts in layers forming the plug. Structural plug. High strength cementitious grout was pumped to form the structural plug and allow stage four to commence. Throughout this R&D process, Mainmark updated the client at every step, ensuring the highest standard of service. Stage four, cementitious shaft fill. The shaft was backfilled in a bottom-up grouting program with a combination of FB200, as specified by Douglas Partners, which is a modified, variable mobility, water-tolerant, cement-based grout. Once on-site stocks were exhausted, the remainder of the shaft was filled with approximately 202 cubic metres of Terrafil 1600. Again, CCTV footage was used each time the casings were raised to verify the outcome and notify the client of progress. The shaft was filled to the top of the steel collar, remediating the shaft. Stage 5. Secondary grouting. 27 20 metre deep boreholes were drilled in a 3 by 3 metre grid pattern around the main shaft to enable a secondary grouting program to target unknown surface voids. 
During drilling works, it became evident that there were significant surface voids surrounding the shaft. Communication between the boreholes was confirmed when compressed air was expelled from adjacent holes during drilling. It was decided that the highly mobile cementitious grout which was to be used for the secondary grouting works was unsuitable due to the large void ratio. A resin grouting program was approved by the client where the urea silicate resin, geofoam, was pumped through an appropriate resin injecting system aided by the use of water inflated packers to target the voided areas. Approximately six tons of geofoam was pumped, successfully filling these voids. On completion of the main shaft backfill, the remainder of the secondary grouting works was completed. Stage six, the final surface cap. On completion of the secondary grouting works, appropriate backfill material, road base, was used to fill above the shaft to match existing car park levels. Asphaltic concrete was then installed, rectifying the car park and signaling the end of the project. Mainmark remediated one of the most technically and physically challenging derelict mine shafts in New South Wales, Australia. Using a bespoke grout formulation and self-releasing grout deflectors, it placed a neutrally buoyant plug 30 metres underwater at 3 bar to support 270 cubic metres of backfill material. The neutrally buoyant non-dissolvable grout formulation and custom application method was an Australian first and a major achievement for the project. It involved extensive consultation and management of external experts. To Mainmark's knowledge, the solution is unrivaled. Mainmark was the primary contractor for this project. It worked in conjunction with Douglas Partners, the client's geotechnical engineer. Mainmark engaged the services of Raymond W. Hen, chief consultant of Brearley Associates, to provide advice on potential solutions to form the temporary plug. BG&E Materials Technology Consultants to provide advice on the materials used to fill the underwater portion of the mine shaft. TerraTest Sonic Drilling to provide drilling and installation of casings. Peter Hodgson, an independent materials scientist, to assist with developing grout formulations. Wirelong Machinery and Engineering Proprietary Limited assisted with drilling and providing specialist plant and engineering shop services. Gerald Wilkinson, the motel owner, had a keen interest in the project and with outgoing hospitality accommodated some of Mainmark's team while on site. He also eagerly supplied photos documenting the progress of works over the years. This project incorporated a combination of different grouting techniques, difficult drilling, and required substantial research. Overcoming the challenges faced at each step of the process resulted in the successful completion of this project. As the primary contractor, Mainmark provided a complete end-to-end -end solution. It completed emergency stabilization works quickly, was the only vendor to offer a suitable drilling solution, and invented a bespoke grout that ultimately proved a cost-effective alternative to conventional methods. With a commitment to excellence and client service, Mainmark delivered both value and quality for the derelict mines program, saving them roughly $1 million. Mainmark led an expert team of subcontractors to deliver success within the core project budget. Its transparent and collaborative approach fostered a strong relationship with the client, supported by regular communication about the project's challenges, setbacks and successes. Certainly the major challenge involved the coordination and involvement of a number of different stakeholders, both internally and externally. Kate Madison, the Derelict Mines project manager, stated, I've never seen a method like this. It was a novel approach that successfully solved an extremely complex engineering challenge. Unlike most of our other mine shaft remediation programs, this project required a unique approach, sensitivity to the surrounding urban environment and management of risks to the public. Mainmark went above and beyond to deliver results. What began as a 10-week program of work ended up taking months because it was much more technical than anticipated and required extensive site trials. The Mainmark team was intuitive, easy to work with and demonstrated a strong understanding of documentation requirements for government projects. Due to the, the nature of the works, there are a number of on-site technical challenges that we had to overcome 
throughout the project as well that were you know popping up daily and, and weekly. It was a very collaborative team approach. Maymark ultimately succeeded with this project, I believe, because of the diverse range of products and technologies we have and also the, the technical support that we have throughout the business. 